guys and welcome back to the channel and today we are doing pizzas on the Kamado Joe so I'm gonna come right out of the gate with a disclaimer I am not a pizza expert by any stretch of the imagination uh, I enjoy making them at home myself I know there are wormholes you can dive down when it comes to different uh, dough hydration levels and uh, different ways to cook them and obviously wood fired is the sort of holy grail of pizza making but recently I've been playing about with the Kamado Joe uh, working on a setup that works for me. Uh, it's quick to set up, it's quick to cook them and uh, honestly I think this one really works well so I wanted to come on share it with you guys who maybe have a Kamado Joe and can give it a try and want to make decent pizzas at home yourself. So the first thing we really need to talk about is the dough itself. Uh, the dough is what takes your pizza sort of to the next level if you can get a good recipe and the one I use is pretty standard and it's the one thing you're going to have to be a little bit prepared ahead of time. The dough I've made for today's video proves for two and a half hours, uh, anywhere up to three hours is fine uh, and that's just at room temperature. So we start off with basic uh, double knot flour, uh, this is the Caputo bread flour, I think it's Caputo, is that how you pronounce it? Caputo? It's double knot flour. So around 500 grams of double knot flour and then we're going with 300 grams of water. I like to do everything by weights whenever I'm measuring out doughs, uh, so it works pretty well. So 300 grams of water. Uh, the water needs to be warm, uh, ideally somewhere between the 40 to 45 degrees Celsius range. That temperature really helps prove the yeast, so uh, get your thermal pan in there and double check the temperature of your water. Now into that 300 grams of water you go in with your yeast, which I've used about 2 grams of instant yeast. Uh, and then in with around 10 grams of salt. Give that all a good mix up just to dissolve the yeast into the water and leave it to the side uh, until it starts to sort of foam on top. Then I've used my Kenwood mixer with the uh, dough hook attachment on it to make the dough. You can certainly do it by hand but I ain't got time for that. So we're 500 grams of flour are in the mixing bowl and then we slowly add in the yeast mixture uh, while the machine is running. You want to run it at this first stage at quite a low speed uh, just until it brings the dough together. Uh, once the dough has formed together and it starts to sort of attach around the hook, uh, you can turn it up slightly, don't go crazy, but turn it up a little bit and you want to need that for around 10 minutes or so. After the 10 minutes are up, your dough should be nice and workable, so I just remove it from the mixing bowl, uh, form it into a rough ball with a nice smooth surface on top, uh, it's just going to help it prove up nicely, uh, and then put it into a floured bowl. And cover that with a little bit of cling film, and we're going to leave that to the side for 2.5 to 3 hours to prove. Okay, so after the two and a half hours are up, uh, we lift the dough out of that bowl uh, and wet it out into dough balls. Uh, each dough ball is weighing roughly around 270 grams, so this is enough to give us sort of three decent sized pizzas. Whenever you've weighed them out into their individual portions, form them into dough balls again and put them onto a tray just to relax for a little while. Uh, cover them over with uh, some more cling film, it just stops the sort of crust forming on top of them. And you want to set them to the side for 20 minutes or so just before you start uh, forming them into your pizzas. Now one other thing you will need is a pizza sauce. Uh, you can just go with regular canned tomatoes but this is actually a cooked sauce. It doesn't take that long to make so I thought it was sort of worthwhile doing it. So this is a pretty simple one to make. Uh, it's just fry off a clove of garlic in a little bit of olive oil. Uh, then add in your tomatoes, you might go in with about a teaspoon of dried oregano and dried basil, uh, about a tablespoon of sugar and then a good season of salt and pepper. And just simmer that all down for 20-25 minutes uh, and it should give you a nice consistency of sauce. You don't want it too wet and uh, you don't want it too dry either, it can be a little bit hard to spread out then. So that can be done ahead of time and just keep it in the fridge to use whenever you're making your pizzas. Okay, the final thing to talk about then is how the Kamado Joe is set up. So we have a good fire going down in the firebox. We want to cook these pretty hot. Uh, I have the accessory rack on the top level uh, with the deflector plates on top of that. Then the pizza stone needs to go on, but to create a sort of small air gap in between them, I have used a couple of nuts. So you put them under the deflector plates and then set the pizza stone on top of that. Just creates a little bit of air cap and stops your stone from overheating. Temperature wise we're running at around 250C. Um, you can go a little bit hotter but 250C gives you a decent cook time and a sort of nice crust on the bottom of it. So there's only one thing left to do and that is to actually start making up some pizzas. So I'm going to go through the ones that we traditionally make for our family. Uh, my wife is her favourite, the kids are their favourite 
and then I've got a different little one at the end. I tend to change my mind quite a lot when it comes to pizzas, so uh, we'll see about it for the end. But we'll start off with the kids' pizza. Okay, I brought you in a little bit closer here. I know my head's cut off, but uh, the main action's going on down here, so I want you to be able to see it. So we're going to form out our first pizza. Just going to put a little bit of flour down onto the board. Try not to use too much, you shouldn't need it, the dough is not overly wet. Pick up one of our dough balls here. So they're quite nice and soft. You can see the all little air bubble in there. Uh, really for shaping pizzas, I'm not an expert, there's guys who can flip them about everywhere. This is sort of my tried and tested foolproof method. So first off, what you want to do is go around and press all the air out to the crusts. A little bit more flour on top while we're working on it. I'm fully open to taking tips. If anybody has a great way of forming pizzas, I'm more than happy to learn. So this is just how I have been doing it. And the kids like their pizza quite chewy so I don't tend to cook theirs as much uh, they're not a huge fan of the really like, crispy bubbly crusts so they like it a little bit more doughy so once we've got to this point then we just pick it up and go between our thumbs holding the crust and just slowly stretch it out so do your best not to rip any holes in it if you get it to a bit that's thin, just move on a bit quicker. Okay. And then all you need to do is stretch out the middle of it. So just throw it over your hands and slowly pull out the way. Because at the minute, the center is probably a little bit thicker. Pretty good. Too many bits there that are, if you hold it up to the light, you can sort of see the bits that are thinner and the bits that are heavier. Hopefully you can't see right through it or else you've got a hole. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, that is sort of decent sized pizza. The kids tend to share one of these. Uh, I can easily polish one off on my own. Okay, next up then, wooden peel. That's what we're gonna make our pizza on and just a little bit of flour dust it over it to hopefully stop it sticking getting the pizza off this thing is the the hardest part like you don't want too much flour on there because it can burn whenever it's on the stone so on with the pizza so toppings for the kids are really simple so dollop of our pizza sauce and just use the back of the spoon to spread that out you don't want too much on there or you can end up with a bit of a, a soggy base try and be gentle not to catch the base too much or you'll end up ripping a hole in it so once our sauce is on, then we're going to go on with cheese. Using mozzarella, this is a pizza mozzarella, uh, so it's not the, the stuff that's in water. So it's quite um, solid and I find it just goes a little bit better on pizzas. You don't get a soggy a base. And then the kids pretty much just like a few slices of salami. Then and a few pepperoni. Just check it's still moving on the peel. You can still sort of grab it and tug it about at this point. But you do not want to get any moisture between the pizza and the peel. That will spell disaster. The last thing I'm going to do before we put it on then take a little bit of oil and just brush around that crust. The 
again on a wood fire you maybe don't have to do this but I just find it helps brown up the crust a little bit whenever you're doing them on the Camaro. Perfect. That's that one then ready to go on. So we'll move you over and we'll uh, launch it onto the stone. So here we are. The stone is reading about 270 ish. Our dome temp is reading just over 250. Take the pizza, slide it onto the stone and get the leg closed. Okay, we'll let that go for three, four minutes, uh, and then we'll check it, see if we need to spin it around. Stone should be pretty even the whole way across, but uh, always good to double check it, see how your crust's looking, and maybe give it a turn, uh, and we can check up on it, and then usually they'll take maybe between seven, eight minutes, uh, and they should be done. Okay, it's been about three minutes. Double check the base on it, it's still looking good. Give it a little spin, even cooking, give it a few more minutes and we should be good to go. Next one then is for my wife and she does not like as much crust so we're going to press it out a little bit further around the edges we're not going to end up with those big puffy crusts we had on the, the kids one. So I'm going to pick it up start going through your fingers stretching out those crusts and around the edge over the hands again stretch out the centre Pretty good. A little bit bigger this time maybe. Let's get our peel back in. A little bit of flour onto the peel. Set it on. Okay, so again, this one is for my wife and she prefers so we're going with our spoonful of the sauce. Again, we'll just take it a little bit further out this time. A little bit less crust on it. So we're gonna load this one up, like I say, a little bit closer to the edges. Now, her toppings of choice are mozzarella, Then tuna. She absolutely loves tuna pizzas. I have to say I don't mind them myself. I know some people don't like them, but when they're done right, they taste pretty good. A few slices of red onion. Again, anything you're putting on top of a pizza should be cut really fine because it has to cook fast. You don't want big chunky pieces of onion on here because they're, they're still going to be hard if you take them off. Okay, now here's the part I can't deal with. Capers and black olives. Just isn't my idea of fun, but she loves it. I don't mind capers, but I just can't be doing with olives. You can let me know in the comments section if you agree or disagree. Now, hopefully, it's still moving on the peel, that's good. So, quick brush with oil again, around the edges. That's how it's good to go on. Let's get it going.
more pizza left to make. And it is mine. Here. Dug all in here. Flour over the top. Now, I flip flop about with pizza toppings all the time. I um, I love just a plain three cheese pizza or margarita. Um, quite like pepperoni from time to time. Anything with meat on it is good. But we're doing something a little bit different today. And I have made this one before. And I really liked it. And it's maybe not a traditional pizza top one, but it's not that wacky either. I'm gonna act like it's something that nobody's ever eaten before. Get our crust formed and then we'll get into it. I think pizza is like a a universal favourite food. I don't really know anybody that doesn't like it from time to time. Some people eat it all the time, which is fair enough. I fully understand and appreciate it. But it's just one of those things, it's, again, it comes back to the whole burgers thing. That's why I like burgers, because there's so many different uh, variations of them. Pizza, is there's even more. It's looking pretty good. No, you can make pizzas and never have the same one twice. Or you can make the same one every time if you want. Hopefully keep it moving. I haven't screwed one up yet and it better not be mine because the rest of them all came off perfect. I'll be got it. So, on we go. So, first off, again, with our sauce. Forms a good base for anything. Again, I like mine with slightly thinner base, but still decent crusts on it. I like nice chewy crusts. Just get a bit of sauce and dip them, so we will leave a good bit of crust on this one. Looks good. Okay, first thing, I think any pizza needs mozzarella. No matter what your toppings are, there should always be mozzarella on it. So, on with our mozzarella cubes again. Then, here are the two ingredients. Spinach, baby spinach leaves. Now, normally if you were putting basil onto a pizza, you would put it on at the end because it would just wither away. But we want this to really wilt down. So the, the heat is really gonna help with that. Next thing then, goat's cheese. This is a soft goat's cheese. You can use a hard one, but soft one is nice just to crumble over. Okay, then the last thing is Parma ham. Nice and thin. We're not gonna put it on a big sheets. We're just gonna tear it into shreds. Just place it every now and again. little curls perfect maybe just crumble the last couple of wee bits of cheese over all right same story as before oil on the crust just helps them brown up a little bit fingers crossed it's moving it is let's get it on cheese, parma ham, nice homemade sauce, this crispy base, doughy crusts, that's important for me, here goes, mm. that's phenomenal pizza, 
love the ghost cheese in it. Just adds a different sort of texture to it and taste. Mostly texture. You get them kind of undertones of taste come through, but putting a bit of Parmesan over the top definitely uh, is the most powerful cheese on there, but that is a tasty pizza. sauce is so good too. Loads of garlic in there. I think it's really important for a pizza sauce. You can spice it up a little, put a bit of chili in there as well if you want a bit of heat to it. You can swap it out for barbecue sauce. Kids, the pizza are done for them. You, normally I will add barbecue sauce onto it as well. They tend to, as kids are known to do, change their mind quite a lot. Sometimes they want barbecue sauce, sometimes it's just normal tomato. But Pizzas on the KJ have really changed. I've done them on my Weber Kettle before and I've never been able to get the results. And I'm not entirely sure what it is either because we're not really cooking at much of a higher temperature than I was doing on the kettle, but whether it's just having them sort of sitting up a bit higher in the dome, uh, more even retained heat, but they work out phenomenal. So that was a bit of an insight into my current method for doing pizzas. It may change. Uh, pizzas are one of the things I love changing up recipes and methods. Uh, maybe bumping the temperature a little bit. So as things change, I may do update videos in the future. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go and enjoy this pizza. Uh, again, all the recipes are in the description box below if you want to go and check them out for the sauce and the dough recipe. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.